while Earth's magnetic pole shift doesn't exactly make the mainstream news headlines. It's not exactly a state secret either. For more than a decade now, scientists have been publishing evidence that Earth's magnetic poles are in the process of reversing. In 2003, the public got a huge leap in learning as NASA published their foundation article on how Earth was changing in this way. They plotted every position of the North Magnetic Pole over the last 175 years, and we can see that the 1831 to 1904 pole migration during the first 73 years was fairly normal, but that it was followed by a much larger jump over just 68 years and then jumped that same distance in only 29 years. The pole had been moving slowly for hundreds of years, seen in purple, pink, and red. But then the 1900s come along, and we go orange into yellow and green. The North Pole has certainly begun to shift. And while the South Magnetic Pole is moving more slowly, it is definitively shifting too, and has now left the continent of Antarctica, coming up in the southeastern Indian Ocean. Now the North Pole's position was not easily discernible on the Mercator map, so we'll switch to the Arctic view, zooming in so we can see that the North is breezing by the actual geographic pole as it speeds up towards Siberia. Please notice that the distance jumps get smaller there at the end. Also notice that those are predictions rather than actual readings. In the past three updates to these databases have all predicted that slowdown incorrectly. So let's not allow that apparent slowdown to fool us this time. The poles are shifting faster and faster. Part of Earth's magnetic system is the magnetosphere, Earth's magnetic shield. As if the shifting poles were not enough, we notice a progressive weakening of our shield similar to the pole shift. It's weakening faster and faster and faster. As of the year 2000 update, our field had lost 10% of the strength it enjoyed before the magnetic poles began to shift, and since then, we have noted further weakening, large breaches in Earth's magnetosphere, and then more weakening. In fact, as of late 2010 or early 2011, Earth's magnetism was down 15%. That is not exactly a great trend you want to see, and it continued with the 2015 data as well. As these poles continue advancing, the SWARM mission has taught us that the trend of magnetic field weakening is continuing as well. So where are we now here in 2015? 17%? 20%? More? While we're talking about the strength of the magnetic field, please know that it is not homogeneous across the planet. There are three areas where stronger protection is afforded to our planet by the fields above. One of those is centered in northern Canada peaking out around 60,000 nanotesla. A slightly stronger field can be found above Siberia, and the strongest field nearing 70,000 nanotesla is atop the southern magnetic pole. However, there is a weak spot as well. The South Atlantic anomaly, where the field protection drops to less than 20,000 nanotesla, and where the Van Allen radiation belts dip into the upper atmosphere during solar storms, and where the cosmic ray reading record was taken, is quite the thing. Swarm is already detecting single event upsets around the world, with the majority coming in areas where the magnetic field is weakest, far fewer overtop the area where the strongest fields can be found. So not only are the magnetic poles shifting faster and faster, but Earth's magnetic field is fading faster and faster. You would think a magnetic reversal would occur with one pole going in one direction and the other pole moving around the opposite side of Earth, keeping the poles pretty much on opposite sides of the planet, but that is not what we have here. The North Pole is heading across the Arctic towards Siberia, while the South comes up from below Australia. Because the North Pole is moving faster, their meeting place appears to be below the equator near the Indonesia Bend. This is also important because in February 2014 we posted the video called Disturbance Under the Ocean, the South Bali Buoy, which was removed from public record the day after that video was made, was showing a dramatic seafloor rise of thousands of feet, 
indicating something was happening below our feet. And it happens to be where both poles are moving. Even more interestingly is the opposite side of the planet. The Earth can't have north and south poles in the same place, so if one shall remain at the South Bali buoy, the other one should pop out somewhere around here. I say somewhere because the magnetic poles are almost never exactly on opposite sides of the world, so it would be this general area over to the left just between the Bermuda Triangle and the South Atlantic Anomaly. Best guess for which one of those would get the pole is up to you, but the fact remains, our poles are shifting towards one another. Unfortunately, the end result of magnetic reversals is not such a happy tale for our planet. Our magnetic field protects us from the sun, which would strip our planet's atmosphere without the protection. Way et al. brilliantly correlated each of the previous great extinction events on Earth with these magnetic reversals. Because of the extra oxygen loss into near-Earth space, Earth is also at risk from major star water events, like Noah's flood might have been. The star water danger here is detailed in a video called Super Flood. You can also research Arc Storm to learn more about the smaller version of the Super Flood. There is a new danger now, however, that was never present before. Way above our heads, we find electric layers, magnetic fields wrapping around our planet. We've been talking about them in this video. If we lose our shield, we are at risk for a danger that can happen much more quickly than an oxygen loss. The greatest danger that solar eruptions pose to Earth is electrical. The sun can surge so much energy into the Earth that transformers and grids could be destroyed. We could be without electricity for years. This footage comes from the video, How to Watch the Sun. The short version of the story we tell there is that the sun can send us back to the Stone Age, and that weakening magnetic shield is what stops it from happening, and stops solar plasma from breaching Earth's protective layers and destroying the ozone and upper atmosphere. Extinction is certainly a possibility with magnetic reversals. Now, while many scientists admitted that a reversal was potentially underway, Others have yet to reach that conclusion, and those who had always thought it would take hundreds or thousands of years to complete. But a few Berkeley scientists just blew that wide open. In case you couldn't tell from the pole movement speed and the speed of the field weakening, at these rates of change, we don't have hundreds or thousands of years left. The official word is that reversal can happen as quickly as 80 years, a human lifetime. We're already a hundred years into this one. All those other video resources I mentioned throughout this video can be found right below. Just scroll down and click the links. Look, there's no sense in being afraid of any of these things. That won't help anyone. But you should ask yourself, are you willing to bet on the Earth stopping in its tracks and reversing this cycle? Or is this shift and the speed with which it is hastening something you wish to care about?